when I was going to school for engineering, I never understood, like I wanted to be a music producer, but I didn't understand the, the, the process of sound mm -hmm. and what sound actually is, it's everything and, and how you can manipulate it. And when you guys are putting together the like pre-production, like when you guys are thinking about the record or the concept and where you want to take it or whatnot, you know, you, you, you were talking about everything that, you know, how, how you bring it together all in one here. But mm -hmm. when you when you put a pre-production, are you guys going in the studio? Are you guys talking? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We spent a ton of money in the studio. I had to hear that for like... <laughs> I had to hear that. It's just like in the a studio year. the whole yeah, time. It's been, almost, it's been almost a year. Yeah. But I'll just studio. argue and say that Stevie Wonder used to take three and four and five years sometimes. <laughs> wow. Uh, that is crazy. Okay, but he also, that. when he dropped it, he would drop like four or five records like right the same after time. Yeah, okay, so there's no <laughs> comparison. <laughs> but, um, and, the, and the Beatles, I mean, look what they did in seven years. But, yeah. uh, but you know, I, I work at a very different pace and sometimes like, I go into a super crazy direction and Shay throws out a, a lasso and he ropes me back into reality like, okay, you're bugging. Right. <laughs> People are not gonna dance at a festival to Dr. Seuss <laughs> tunes. You know, but you know, but then that's the funny thing is that he'll go back and go, but you know what? There's this one record out of that batch, and that's how like a lot of nerd records got made. Right. There was no there was never really a cohesive, uh, you know, formulaic way of making the record. Sometimes we, you know, like Lap Dance was from Nas. Oh, was it? Oh, yeah. Wow. yeah. He didn't take it, thank God. <laughs> you know, and then once we had Spy Mob go back in and replay over it, it was like a monster joint. Mm -hmm. So you just never know where a record is gonna come from. Do you ever know like when to say when? Because I remember seeing a video with you working with Snoop on Drop It Like It's Hot. Right. And it definitely sounded more, you know, different and interesting than anything we'd have heard. And I remember seeing Snoop's face looking at you like, what is this? You know, but yeah, yeah. as you're explaining to him it's coming together, yeah. how do you know when it's too much or not enough or do you even Sometimes care? Sometimes you don't know. Mm -hmm. I, by the way, I didn't think beautiful was going to be what it was. Mm -hmm. I just knew it felt good to me because mm -hmm. there was a, a, a sense of nostalgia in there with Charlie Wilson. Mm -hmm. And I always like dreamed of working with bands that are either A, not together anymore, or B, not doing the same type of music as they were 20 or 30 years ago. So that's kind of like what it was. I mean, this particular album right here, um, this is, there's grunge moment moments and there's like um, pop punk moments. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot, a lot, a lot of bottom end. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I was blown away when the tribe the first Tribe album was crazy, but then the second album was Low End Theory, mm -hmm. and that's where they got, they, they really focused on like what was coming out of the Jeep. Mm -hmm. And so for us, it's not really about like the Jeep anymore, obviously. It's about these things right here, which right. I forgot that they were <laughs> <laughs> in my ear, but it's about those. And right. it's about, you know, manipulating the, the frequencies and sound waves, you know, so I don't know, man. As much and as much as I keep saying, like it's not about thought. There's so much thought put into this album, but it's really, really, really about the feeling. And you, I, I'm so charged about it. It's not even fun. Do you have someone in mind when you're making all your music? Because last time you talked about this one album you were making for kids who suffered from ADD, yeah. and how they would listen to it, how it would affect them particularly. Do you yeah. always have someone in mind when you're making a record, or? This album was inspired by like. Um, the things that we as Americans like. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you could put an age on that or a particular demographic on it, but it just seems to me that like, we all love, you know, nice lush rock guitar chords and we all love, you know, 808s to me. And I know that everybody wants something now, mm -hmm. right? This is the microwave era, right? So we named the record instant gratification. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Shay, like when you, when you were working with everybody, whether it's Chad or Pharrell, and like when you guys, when you guys are collaborating together, do you feel that um, there's there's it, it's it's easy to communicate? Like the communications in the studio is much different than when you guys are like let's say on tour and just talking <coughs> about a record, or uh, when you guys are just talking about something in the mixing process. Do you guys adjust while you're mixing, or you know you think you're done and this is it's a wrap? Mm. Normally it's easy. But this 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 last album is it's been pretty difficult. Like we, we haven't all been on the same page. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I you know, Pharrell was here in one direction, Chad was here in a completely different so was myself. So we've been clashing a lot, but you know, we all throw in our input. I mean and we as well. So we you know, we all throw in our input and you know we somehow work it out. Yeah. That's like you always see like a group like 
you know, there's so many people in a group or, you know, everybody has a different influence or something that they want in it. So it seems like you guys just keep making more well, and more. It's, t it's tough. I mean, especially with the way, you know, the way music is now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, any ideas, like, we've never been like your typical band that get tons of spins from radio, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. With the exception of y'all and maybe a few other radio stations. No one, you know, no other radio station are willing to take that risk on us. You know what I mean? We make t our music is too edgy, it's too controversial. So, okay. Good so you know, we we you know the approach with this album, we we definitely kept that in mind and try to make, you know, radio friendly records, but still keep the you know the essence of what NERD is about. So, you know, it was tough because. You got some people in the room that want to go straight, no brainer, and then you have other people in the room that want to just keep it dark and just edgy and not give. Yeah, I guess that's. But that's what that's what this that's what the record ended up being. Good songs, so they were like no brainer, but like the the beats just hit hard, so there was like a lot of edge. I'm 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 excited about it. I played like tons and tons of Mario Kart. <laughs> <laughs> while while just you know while being in that mode, right. like ritualistically every night, <laughs> we're hooked on that. By the, the way, Mario Kart. Mario Kart is it. <laughs> <laughs> Mario Kart is the best game on the planet, and I never thought I would say that ever because Gallagher for me, like you guys don't even know what that is. But I've had so many Gallagher machines in my house, like in Virginia and Miami, like wherever. If if I could have one on a tour bus, it would have been there. But Mario Kart. <laughs> that changed my life. Oh, wow. The mushrooms. What else do you guys do to unwind from the music industry? Other than Mario Kart. Other than Mario Kart. Is there anything else? To unwind? Yeah, anything to get yourself out of the, the industry for a moment. I don't know. I just think, you know, creating, period. For me, it's just like, mm -hmm. that's what I like to do across the board, mm -hmm. whether it's in, you know, music and visual art or design or fashion. Mm -hmm. I'm, 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 I, I don't complain. Every once in a while, I'm like, okay, I need two or three days to just kind of like lay around. Yeah. Because there is that part of me that just likes to lay in the bed all day and eat pop tarts and cereal. <laughs> <laughs> and be, be the little boy that I am. Do you guys have any questions? Well, I just want to say uh, time for some action. I, that's my, I have all your albums, but that that is just, come on, Body High, that's my theme song. I just want, I wish other people could experience like, it was like a radio single or something like that could kind of experience that that feel well, you good know what? kind of vibe. That was our fault. That was our fault. We heard that a couple of times and we kind of didn't. <coughs> we heard that and we heard um, what was the other record? Anti. Anti. Oh, and we kind of like, all right, cool. <clears throat> but you know what? The 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 people will choose the next one. So thank you. I we appreciate that. That's cool. It's great, man. <laughs> Great album. I'm just looking forward to this next one because uh, every every album y'all make is, is so different from the next one, from uh, from Fly or Die, from uh, Search of. I mean, but they all got this like meanings. Like this is it's a lot to search and you know, the, the look for and those things. Whether it's you know, I just I just like what y'all bring to the table. I mean, like I said, y'all edgy, but it's like you feel like you're kind of like in a like you know like. A club that you can't learn people like still 54 or something like you know you're like how did I get here you know like you feel kind of privileged to be in that uh, right. that place so right. that's really what y'all cool. do thank you man that's really cool dude. thank you Gosh, when I, that everyone knows remix with Kanye did you two work on that beat together or is that you or you and Chad or what or, yeah I was that beat was filthy like, man thank you man uh, thank you woo. yeah thank you man <laughs> you gotta go do that one tonight <laughs> Oh, you know what's so funny? Yeah. <laughs> I think you'll be happy. All right, let's do it. Let's party. <laughs> I had something to say. I just appreciate how conscious you are of the kids. Because I remember last year, I think, Glow in the Dark tour. Yeah. We came back out to, to apologize to the kids and stuff yeah. for any cursing. Like, parents kind of need to know when you take your kids to a hip hop concert, kind of what's going to happen. But the fact that you went above and beyond to, you know, apologize is really, really respectable. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Thank you.